If you're considering building, then this is the right video for you. I'm George Samios and I'm building my house right now. And in this video, I wanna talk about the pros and cons to building your own house versus buying an established property. So firstly, if you're in a rush, building probably isn't gonna be for you. Building takes time, so let me explain exactly the process. First things first, you need to buy land. Or if you wanna buy in the inner city, there is no land anymore. So you're gonna to have to buy an established property. By the way, you wanna make sure you check with a town planner that house isn't pre-war, AKA 1946. Because if it is, you generally can't knock it down. And if you do happen to buy a property, which is post-war we call it, and you can knock it down, that's an additional cost. To knock down a house anywhere from 20 to 30 grand. And that's if they don't find asbestos, which could be an extra 10 to 20 grand. As you can see, it can become pretty expensive. So let's say you buy the existing property, you can knock it down, then what? Well, then you've got a block of land. You've got to get your plans, specs, find a builder, do a fixed price contract, begin your construction journey. To be honest with you, a fair assessment of time is probably going to be, honestly, the earliest 12 to 18 months by the time you're actually in your house. So if you're in a rush, building probably isn't for you. But on the flip side, Building your own house is amazing because you get to completely design it to your lifestyle. Me, like I said earlier, I'm building my own house right now. So doing things that is a bit more my style is easy because I designed it from the ground up, like a bigger garage. I don't want a six meter wide garage, I want it eight meters wide so I can open the doors when I go out for both the cars. For example, having a really big outdoor area is important to me and my family. Being of Greek heritage, I love getting the family over and doing big barbecues. Whereas versus an existing property, you can't really extend your garage or extend your living area. So these is definitely some pros and cons to building. Now, another thing you gotta consider, when you are holding the land, you're also paying interest. So it is technically gonna cost you money uh, whereas if you bought an existing property, you can move straight in. Instant gratification almost, but also economically makes sense. But you gotta live with the way the house is laid out as it is. It's not as easy to change. Another thing to consider is finding the right builder. Right now, 2023, Queensland, Australia, Brisbane specifically, builders are going broke. We do loans for a lot of customers, and unfortunately this year, we had a couple of builders go broke, which in turn, my customers are in stress and out of pocket because we've got to go find another builder. And traditionally, the second builder doesn't really want to take on the job. They want to put a bit of a safety buffer on top of it, which costs you more money and more time paying the interest on the land. So you want to go to a reputable builder when you build because you don't want to be unfortunate, the victim of a builder going broke. Now look, let's not be silly. If you do buy an existing property, you can renovate, and a lot of us Aussies, especially in Queensland, are with our special Queenslander style houses, do extensions, raise, build under. And a lot of people these days can live through a renovation, and the builders are getting pretty good at it because, hey, moving out, paying the mortgage plus paying rent is an expensive exercise. So we are seeing a lot of customers actually live through the renovation. So you don't have to buy, knock down, rebuild. You can buy and renovate. Which leads me to another very, very good piece of advice. If I'm now married with three kids, so I built my house very practical for the next 10, 15 years. If I had built my house five, 10 years ago before I had any kids, I think it would be very different now. So I suggest to those watching who wanna build, maybe live in a house a bit first and really think what do you want? Do you really wanna big pool, big grass area? Do you want a media room? Do you want a big kitchen with a butler's pantry? Or do you, for example, like me, I didn't even put a media room in my house because I know for the next 10 years, I'm not gonna have the chance to really sit down and watch the movie because I've got a young family. I prefer to have a bigger outdoor area. Look, I'm, I'm not building until my mid thirties now. And I was grateful for that because I was able to live in a lot of different properties to work out exactly how I want my new house to look like. For those who are watching who are first home buyers, there are quite a few government grants to help you and incentivize you to build because hey, the government wants new housing, it gets trades and jobs, 
and we do have a housing shortage with our population expected to increase to 3 million in Brisbane over the next decade around the Olympics. So they want to build new housing. So there are incentives for those first home buyers. And I've got plenty of different videos about all the government grants. So if you're new to watching the channel, please subscribe and go through. There's a lot of different first home buyer videos on my channel. There are a misconception that builders are hard to find right now. Look, I just don't think that's true. It is easy to find builders. Go to Rochdale Housing Estate. They're all there. They're keen for your business. Just make sure you pick a reputable one. Construction prices have risen, yes. However, it is still affordable to build a house in Brisbane. Of course, everyone's situation is different. So my number one tip is go to a mortgage broker, do a borrowing capacity, work out how much you can actually afford, and then have a budget. So when you go do talk to a builder, you can say, my budget is we need to design a house to this budget and no more because a lot of people get caught out not actually telling the builder how much their budget is. I promise you, if you don't tell them your exact budget, it will go over. So you gotta be firm with your budget. I've said a budget about a thousand times because this is the number one thing that people get stuck on and it blows up. To be honest with you, if you're spending more than a million dollars, banks make it mandatory for you to have a 5% contingency for blowouts. So they do happen, been doing this for over a decade. Blowout, budget, blowout, budget. Please make sure you have a budget and try and stick to it. Easier said than done though, because it's building a house is very emotional. I'm going through it right now. And you do want to have better tiles and you want to have a better bench top and you're going to want to have better appliances. So I do understand, I can relate, I'm going through it. Things like, I didn't want to spa, but now I've got a spa in my pool. It happens, <laughs> yeah. but just try to be, stick to a budget. So overall, building is not for everyone. Some people haven't got the luxury of waiting 12 to 18 months to move in. So buying an existing property and maybe doing a reno is up your alley. And for those who have got the ability to buy, design, and wait to move in, building is a great option. Hopefully today's video, you learned some stuff. If you're again new, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks heaps, I'm George Samios. Take care.